All right, we have head coach Mike Candrea here, and it uh, looks like Troy is up first for Coach Candrea. So, Coach, after a long and crazy offseason, Thursday you guys are going to be opening up the year. Can you just take me through the excitement level around the, uh, the team and for yourself to finally get things going? Well, I know um, we've been waiting a long time for this, so uh, the excitement should be there. Uh, you know, if you, you look at the body of work, uh, over the last few months, um, I've been very pleased with um, what this team has brought to the field every day. And so I know they're excited to play and we're tired of playing each other. I'm sure our pitchers will enjoy seeing someone else and our hitters will enjoy seeing some different pitchers. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it seems like it's been years, to be honest with you. I mean, it seems like it's been a long time uh, since we put on a uniform and, and uh, had an opponent in the other dugout. So we're very excited and uh, looking forward to a, a good challenge. Um, basically was looking at picking up some games this year early and um, this one kind of fell in my lap and uh, I thought what a good opportunity to, to see Texas and Alabama early in the year and um, Sam Houston State, which is a good team. So going on the road and, and seeing how all, how, how all this COVID stuff um, works out, you know, as we travel and um, I think we're all very, very excited to put on a uniform and play someone. And then as you look into the Pac-12 season, you guys have double headers for the first time in a long time against Pac-12 opponents. I was talking to some former players and they said you guys used to do that back in the 90s a little bit. Uh, just talk about the difficulty is to play a Pac-12 opponent in a double header in between series. Um, well, it's... You know, the game of softball, we, we play double headers quite a bit. So it's, it's really nothing new. It's, um, you know, I thought the Pac-12 coaches um, were smart in, in adding a game to our schedule so that uh, we know that um, the protocols are all the same at these institutions. It would probably give us a greater chance of if something did occur that we could play these games. And I think that's what we're looking at right now is just making sure we could play as many games as we could. And um, the, the second game of the doubleheader will be a non-conference game um, unless we only play three games in that weekend, then all three would count toward the conference title. So in my eyes, that second game, if we get all four in, is a great opportunity for me to, to uh, give our young kids an opportunity to get their feet wet in the Pac-12. And so I'm gonna look at it more as a, a, an opportunity to play more people. And uh, if you look at our roster right now, I think um, one of our strengths is our, our depth. And um, so uh, I, it fits very well for us right now um, to, to play those. And we just want to play, you know, to be honest with you. And I think non-conference games against Pac-12 opponents um, will definitely not hurt us come selection time. Up next, we'll go to Sean. Thanks for being here, Coach. So there's a lot of talk about your team and how there is a potential for a championship and all the expectations are high. Is there any advice that you give to your players to sort of avoid the distractions or block out the noise so that they're able to just focus on the games at hand? Yeah, keep their, uh, keep their heads out of uh, the newspapers and out of social media. And uh, the game's going to be played between the lines and you can't look too far ahead. You know, right now it's I've always believed in it's um, it's one game at a time and one pitch at a time and that doesn't change. And um, I think the um, the makeup of our team with our seven super seniors um, will help that um, that venture because I think they understand that you, you you can't can't look too far down the road. And for us right now, our job is to get one percent better every day. Um, and just start playing a game. You know, I think that's going to be my big theme is just to play the game of softball. Do what you, you know, you, you love to do. And I think all of us had it taken away from us. And I think sometimes that's been the blessing out of all of this is that you um, realize how much you really miss playing the sport and um, getting a chance to compete. And so I think every time we walk on a field, it's going to be um, a great opportunity for us to do something we love to do. And you, you, you play them and you take it one game at a time, and and um, you know at the end of the end of the year, if you're good enough and you've and you win the right games, then you're going to have a chance of playing that last game of the season. 
Thank you, Coach. We'll go to Cliff next. Yeah, um, Coach, uh, as far as Deja is concerned, uh, is there anything different with how you manage her, given the fact that she's a part of Team USA, and anything that specifically that you're having to do with her during this season in the process of getting her ready for that while, you know, coaching her through a very grueling college season? Yeah, well, having been through that before uh, myself, um, I have a pretty good idea of what it takes. And I really believe that it's going to help her more than anything because um, normally when we go on tour with the Olympic team, we're playing teams that we know we're going to beat. And so the competition level is not as good as you would like it to be, where I think the, the three college kids um, um, are going to have an opportunity to play a very difficult schedule that will prepare them. And you know, Deja is a is very hard worker. She's um, I think she's matured tremendously as an athlete, um, and I think she knows what she needs to do to be prepared uh, come Tokyo time. And so, right now, it's just doing what she does every day, and that's to get better at at, at what she's what she does in this game for us. I mean, she's a very talented young lady. Um, very strong arm, very good defensive player, very good offensive player. And I think the one thing that I've seen improve more than anything with her is her maturity. Um, she, she has a tendency now to really keep the game slow, um, not let it get too big, you know. And um, to me, those are great qualities that you have to have when you walk in the Olympic arena. And I think the toughest thing, though, when we were training for the Olympic Games and um, – we went on tour. The, the toughest thing is to try to keep yourself at that Olympic arena level mentally and emotionally each and every day in practice. You have to almost fake it. You know, you've got to make games for yourself when it comes to practice time where here I think it's kind of built in for her where she's going to she's going to be in those moments. And I think she'll be very ready, uh, you know, when, when the bell rings and, and uh, hopefully we get get the, the Olympic games going. And um, I have no doubt she'll be prepared. Ryan, you're next. Um, how, how do you think Deja will help your, your, your pitching staff, especially because you you'll have two freshmen and they, they might have to pitch in some really big moments this season. Yeah. I, I just think the, the maturity, um, the, 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 the knowledge that she brings to the table right now, the experience that she brings. And I think, you know, every game's kind of uh, the highs and lows that you have to go through as a pitcher. And uh, I think Deja's really good right now of understanding that and knowing when to go out to the mound and talk to someone and slow them down, um, when to encourage them, um, when to be tough on them. Um, I think she's just, uh, it's like having another coach out there right now with her uh, experience level and her maturity. So um, I think she will help our pitching staff quite well. <laughs> And obviously with all the seniors coming back, you have a, a really good idea of what you have, but what are the kind of the things you're looking for early in the season that you're trying to settle? I know maybe in the outfield, you're trying to determine who to play or at first base or. Yeah. Like well, we have a lot of kids that can play. That's the one thing I like. Um, you know, I think our, like I said, our strength is going to be our depth. And, and um, I think we have a lot of kids that can contribute um, at the end of the day. And so it's my job to probably give them the, the experience that I can um, while meeting the challenges along the way. That's, that's always a tough thing. And so um, that's why it's important for us to, to play 56 games, you know, and not play a 20-game schedule. And so um, I, I think it's wide open. I think um, you're going to see um, every kid on this team get an opportunity throughout this season, to the most part. I mean, the ones that I think are ready, um, I will make sure that they get an opportunity. Um, but at the end of the day, we're going to put our best nine out there each and every day and, and compete to, to win a ball game. Rich Herrera, up next. Mike, how are you? Hey, welcome back. Thank you so much. Uh, question for you. What was the message you said to your team when you finally got them all back together after the COVID disruption? And, and what have you really emphasized in, in workouts getting ready for these Texas games? Well, Rich, you know, when we um, – when it all went down, I really didn't know what to say because I didn't know what, what I was um, preparing for. It was the unknown, you know, and um, 
the only thing that I know that it was a, a lot of sad faces when we had to call the season. And so my first job was to um, get on the phone and call every AD that I've had relationships with and say, some way, somehow, we've got to give these kids another opportunity to come back. And so that's where kind of my focus went to. And um, when they passed that, I was probably the happiest guy in the world that these kids got a chance to come back. And, you know, we got a very special class. Not everyone probably wanted all their seniors back, but we're in a situation where we have seven super seniors that are all very good players and um, very high character kids. And um, I think any college kid, especially in softball, you know, when for, for most, this is the end of their career. Um, you want them to be able to go out the right way. And, and one of the special parts in our program is playing at Hillenbrand Stadium with a packed house. And, and senior day is a pretty special day for each and every one of them that they remember for their entire life. And not being able to do that and not be able to have the right closure with their careers really bothered me. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited that they get a chance to come back and, and do it right. And uh, I hope that we can get fans in the seats. You know, that's my next venture is, you know, hopefully that we can uh, put some people in the stands and, and give these kids an opportunity to play the game in front of, uh, I think, some of the best fans in the country. So I've talked about you behind your back on the radio for a long time. And one of the things I've never asked you, but I've always wondered is Arizona softball sits on such a, um, a pedestal around the country. And so many people know this program and they circle your name and the schedule for Arizona softball when the schedules come out. How tough is that when each and every week you're always going to get everybody's best uh, and you have to be on top of your game, both physically and mentally? And, and how do you explain that to freshmen that they're going to get everybody's best shot because you're wearing that block A? Well, I think, first of all, freshmen, um, what, the one thing they don't have is the, is the, um, the database, the experience. And so, you know, it's like telling a kid what's at the end of the tunnel. And until you've gone through the tunnel and you've seen it, it's hard to describe. And so for me to try to describe to a freshman what they're going to go through and what it's going to take for them to play the game at a high level each and every day, um, it, it takes time. And it takes them the, the opportunity to be able to go through that process. Um, everyone else that plays in this program, I think, takes that personally that people are going to be ready for us and we're going to get their best shot. And I've always felt when I first came here in 85 that the only way you're going to be the best is to play the best. And then um, you, your standards are high and you have to uphold those standards each and every day. And, and so I think it's, it's ingrained in our kids that this is why we play the game. This is why we put on the Arizona uniform. And um, it is a challenge. You know, because you can't really have a bad day sometimes. And um, we all know that, you know, I, I look at these guys that play 162 of these and how difficult it is the, to be there physically, mentally, and emotionally each and every time you walk on the field. It's very tough, you know, and that's why I always admired the guys like a, a Derek Jeter that, you know, every time he was playing, he was playing. It looked like he was playing for the fans. You know, he, he was an entertainer, but but he was a performer and he played the game the right way. And that's kind of what I do to our kids is I try to get them to understand that you, you can't take any of this for granted. Um, the reason why they come out to watch you play is because you're good, you know, and you're a good team and, and people like winners. And in order to do that, then you have to embrace the opportunity to play under pressure. And that's what we're kind of talking about. Every time we walk on the field, there's, there's a, a element of pressure that, you have to learn how to deal with. But I think that's what makes this whole experience at Arizona very special. And for me, I just can't make it too big. You know, I try to keep it simple and um, it's a game. At the end of the day, it's not gonna be life-threatening. You know, life will go on. So you've gotta be able to enjoy the moment and, and not sweat the moment. And um, I think once they understand that, um, they get better at handling the pressure and um, it's, it's fun to watch that that process. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, we're going to hit you up to come on the radio quite a bit now. Good to see you. Nice. To take care. And guys, I got to cut it off now. We are at uh, one 30. So uh, coach has got to get out to practice. So thank you everybody for uh, coming and we, we will see you um, 
next week or potentially this weekend in Texas. Bear down. Thanks, Coach. You bet. First question will be from Ryan Calipier. So, uh, you know, how are you guys feeling right now? I mean, you're, you haven't played in a game since last March, and it was the longest offseason ever, and to be on the on the uh, verge of, of playing a game Thursday and also starting against Texas, I, I imagine you guys are super excited. Um, yeah, we're super pumped. Um, it's definitely been a long time, but, you know, with the senior class coming back and the class we had coming in and everyone in between, um, this team is looking really good, and we're excited to – have another team in the dugout and not just scrimmaging each other. So we're ready to go. And, and uh, what, have you, what have you guys just learned about the team so far since since you uh, got back here in January? Yeah. Um, I think that we've learned that we have a lot of depth at every position. Um, we have an all-star freshman class that had come in and obviously we have our repeating seniors. Um, so pretty much we're stacked all around infield, outfield, bullpen, you name it. Um, but the girls are awesome. Good people off the field, good people on the field. So, um, yeah. And then uh, that being said, so both of you, I mean, what are your expectations for this team? I know a lot of people are talking about how it's, it's women's college world series or bust. I mean, is that how you guys feel too? Yeah, I think that's always the goal, but like coach Kendra always says, we have to take it one game at a time. So really our focus is just on Thursday and, uh, getting that first game in against Texas. And what are you most looking forward to from that game? Just getting back on the field. Like you said, we haven't been uh, on the field since March for me in a Wildcat uniform for almost two years now. Um, so I'm just excited to get back on the field with the girls, especially Alyssa over here who I've grown up with. Um, but just getting back on the field is my main focus right now. And Deja, does it feel pretty normal being back? I mean, does it feel like you, you never left or has your, did your experience with Team USA, uh, do you feel a lot different and maybe more mature now than you did when you were last year? I definitely do feel a little bit more mature. Things were a little bit different in the fall just because I hadn't been with the girls for a while. So it was a little bit different getting back into the groove of things. But now that I've been back for a couple months now, um, I feel like nothing has changed. All right, we'll go to Troy Hutchinson up next. And if you guys don't mind, just kind of uh, directing your question at, at who you would like to ask. It just makes it a little easier on our camera guy, Mike Lowry. <laughs> so, uh, Alyssa, uh, since Deja has rejoined the team, have you noticed anything different in terms of uh, leadership or anything like that? Is there a different Deja from when she originally left Arizona? Um, I would say she definitely is more mature. Um, Deja's always been the kind to call you out. And I think that's, I think that's what we needed back. Um, having on the field, um, we get called out and we know we have to get something specific done. Um, and she's that leader for us. And I think that's what makes us a lot better because she knows that there's more potential in everybody and she pushes us to that limit. So definitely having her back has made us stronger and we're glad to have her like she deserves and belongs here. And this is for both of you guys. I know you guys are seniors, uh, fifth and sixth year seniors, but Thursday playing in the game, you know, opening get, opening day, is there going to be some nerves knowing that, you know, we didn't think this opportunity would come and now it's finally here. We finally get to play. Um, I definitely think there's always butterflies. Um, Coach always says, as long as they're flying in the same direction, we'll be okay. Um, so I think definitely being able to step on the field, we're excited. Um, yeah, there's me nerves just to be able to play together again for the first time in a long time, but we're definitely ready to go and we're excited to see what this team can do because it's something special. And then Deja, uh, this senior class is regarded as one of the best Arizona's ever had. Um, with the incoming freshman class, do you see a little bit of your guys' self in them? It seems like they're not your normal freshmen. Oh, 100%. I think our senior class is a credit to the senior class that I had coming in with Mo Mercado, Danielle O'Toole, Kati Malga, and those girls teaching us the way. So I feel like we kind of this year have stepped into their shoes and we have to teach these younger freshmen the same things that they taught us, um, teaching them the ropes and how things go around here at Arizona softball. Um, but they're quick learners. Um, they're willing to listen. They're very coachable and they're just awesome girls. So it's easy for us. Up next, we'll go to Sean Fagan. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Uh, my first question is for Alyssa. So last year, this team started red hot going 16-0 before that extra inning loss against number two Oklahoma. 
So what's the key to starting well this year, especially with two of your first four games being against top 10 teams in Texas and Alabama? Yeah, I definitely think it's just that same mentality of coming in hot, proving that we're the team to beat with what we have. Um, I think just having that fire and that anxiousness to want to play um, will be really big for us um, coming together as a team and being able to step on the field, you know, all together. Um, in this time, we've kind of grown into being more of a family and a sisterhood and knowing what we want to accomplish or what we want to do. So being able to come out and step on the field finally together and not playing against each other um, is a big thing for us. And we're just ready to come out hot and show people in college softball that Arizona softball is still dominant and we're going to get to where we want to go. And then uh, for Deja, so having been with Team USA softball for the past year, what adjustments, if any, do you think you would have to make coming back to college softball to have a successful year with this great team? I don't think there's much. I mean, the game of softball hasn't changed. So I think, if anything, I bring more to the table, considering that I played with women who are a little bit more experienced than all of us on the field because they have 10 plus years on us. So I think the maturity aspect is something that I want to bring to this team and kind of help them in that aspect, um, especially the freshmen. If I can help them get an early jump start on that, um, that will only just make them more successful and the team successful as a whole. Thank you, ladies. Next, we'll go to Cliff. Yeah, um, also for Deja, just how will being a part of the Olympic team, I guess, complicate what you're doing this season for Arizona? How will it change it? Uh, what are the things that you will have to do and how will balancing that be? I don't think there's going to be anything that's too complicated. I mean, I think I'm getting more games in um, as a college athlete and also I'm working under Coach Kendra and Caitlin Lowe who have had that Olympic experience. So they're able to help me and kind of prepare me for what I'm supposed to look forward to, even though the USA team is training together. Um, I think that's the only thing that I'm gonna miss out on is just the working aspect of being part of that team versus being part of another team right now. So, I mean, I'm not losing out on too much. Like I said, I'm getting the game experience in. Um, it's just the team aspect that I'm missing. We're rich next. Thank you so much, Deja. How are you today? I'm great, how are you? Good. Let's talk about your experience with Team USA. Um, being a part of now an even smaller club of not only Arizona athletes, but Arizona softball players that have represented our country on Team USA. Did you get any advice from anybody who's been a Wildcat and a member of Team USA? Um, I get a lot of advice from Coach Kendra and Kate a lot just because I see them all the time. Um, but it's nothing that doesn't change from the advice that they give me here. It's just softball advice, if that makes sense. Just keeping it simple, remaining in the game, taking it one step at a time, things like that. Talk a little bit about Mike Candrea. What makes him so special in the world of softball? Oh man, a lot of people ask this question, but it's just like, if you know Coach Candrea, you know, he's just been a great man um, to everybody. And I think everybody who knows him can vouch for that. He's taken me in and given me a lot of incredible opportunities. Um, Team USA is one of them. Um, just knowing this man and how he wants you to be at your best on the field and off the field is just something and somebody that you want to play for all the time. Alyssa, can I ask you the same question? What makes Mike Candrea so special in the world of softball? Um, I just think his experience with being a coach, um, you know, he's got a lot of titles under his belt, a lot of medals under his belt, and he's got just a knowledge for this game that I think the softball world needed. Um, with that being a player, he is like a father figure to all of us. He treats us like his own kids, and we know that he would take a bullet for us, which makes us want to run through a wall for him. You know what I mean? Um, we have that respect for him and just that that we have someone here who away from home will watch after us and teaches us more of off the field stuff as well as on the field stuff. So we're getting the full package here of learning how to be a player as well as an even better person. And I think there's nothing that can compare to that. Well, so were you able to take advantage of the, of the COVID disruption to work on anything, to get stronger, to, to, to get in the cage, or was there something specific you were, you were able to do to prepare for the season? Um, I mean, nothing that I really haven't done. Um, I focused a lot on just strengthening certain parts of my body that I knew I needed 
to strengthen, um, you know, my knees for one. I mean, I've been through two knee, two knee surgeries, so my body's been through a lot, but I think I've come to a point now where I've gotten a lot of things stronger. I know what I've had to do to make it stronger. And honestly, my body is, you know, it's been through a lot, but I feel as good as I did three years ago. So um, I found certain ways that helped do certain things and I'm feeling pretty good. One last question. Now that you are a senior, it's time for you to pay it forward. How, how, how important is that for you to leave this program in the best possible shape, the way that you found it for the next generation of softballers that are going to come to Tucson? Oof, I think that's super important. Um, I learned a lot coming in, like Deja said, that senior class with Mo and Kati and Lex and Mandy, like all those girls, they took us under their wing and made this softball program back into a culture where we want to focus on family and putting the team first and putting coach first and doing all these things together that we only hope that we can lead to this freshman class and the juniors and sophomores as well to be able to take the next set of freshmen and then on to have that same culture and that same family-like process to where they understand what it's like to be an Arizona Wildcat and to wear the A and to earn it. Um, we just hope that that that's how our teammates think. And we just hope that this program keeps progressing because this program is definitely means a lot to all of us. And we just want to leave it again, better than we found it. Thank you so much. Good luck this week. Thank you. All right, Ryan again. Uh, Deja, what do you, uh, what did you miss the most about Arizona when you were gone and, and what are you enjoying the most now that you're back? I miss the girls and I miss coach the most. Um, just being in a wildcat uniform is something that is so special. It gives you goosebumps every time you put it on. Um, so just getting the opportunity to come back to Rita and to come back to coach and the team meant everything to me. Um, and I have chills right now just talking about it because I love being here and I love the experience. And I don't know how five years went as fast as they did, but I'm just happy to be back. And you mentioned uh, Hill and Brand. So I do have to bring up the fact not, not playing without fans. I mean, what kind of adjustment do you think that'll be? I know you guys scrimmage a lot without fans, but I mean, it's still, I know it's a big part of it, playing at Arizona. Yeah, I think the fans are everything to us. Um, we have the best fans in the country, the best fans in the world. Um, but coach always says, if you need extra motivation, this is the wrong sport for you. So I feel like as long as the 22 girls in the dugout can fire each other up, um, I think we'll be fine. And, and what have you seen from this pitching staff? And how do you think you can help them, particularly the, the, the two freshmen? Um, Alyssa Denham and Mariah, obviously I know very well. Um, Denham, I've known for maybe four years now and Mariah I've known since I was 10. So those girls um, I work very well with just because we know each other as um, well as we do. But with Devin, Jesse Font, um, those newer pitchers, I'm definitely working a little bit more to know what they wanna throw in certain situations and how they like things done. Um, because every pitcher is different. Pitchers are the princesses of the team. Um, so it's my job to make them look good. So obviously I have to pick their brains a little bit and make them feel um, comfortable on the mound because those are our big dogs. Um, but like I said, just getting to know them a little bit more on and off the field and building that relationship with them is something that's very important. And, and does the fact that you've caught, you know, Olympic level pitchers does it, and taking, I'm sure you've learned a lot from them and how they approach the game. How, how can you use that to help your pitchers here? Oh, 100%. Um, I think just going over what I said, that pitchers are different. So the way Monica likes things called is different than the way Kat likes her stuff called. Um, so I have to be like a sponge and soak it all in and understand what pitcher wants what in what situation. And I mean, it is a lot of brain work for me, but I wouldn't have it any other way. So um, yeah. And uh, my last question uh, for Alyssa. Um, what, what do you think of the, your outfield group? I mean, obviously you're, you're well established in center field, but then in the two corner spots, you have all these players who are super talented. There's only so many at bats that can go around. I mean, what do you kind of, what stands out about that group and that, and the competition going on there? Um, yeah, there's, I mean, there's only five of us out there. So every day is, is a grind for us, but the way that we're able to take on that grind together has been exceptional. And I think, Anybody can play anywhere. Um, I think no spot right now is set in stone because we can all play and we can all hit. And I think that's what makes that group so special. And I mean, especially learning from Kate, we're able to do things and be great out there because of the way that Kate pushes us and the way that we're able to go out there and just play and take balls from coach and 
go fly balls gap to gap and be, you know, in somewhat decent shape for that and get things done. Um, this group is special. And I, like I said, anyone can play anywhere and that's what makes it cool. All right, this will be the last question here. We'll go to Troy Hutchison. So uh, Alyssa and, and Deja, you both can answer this. Uh, looking ahead to Thursday, what makes Texas such a tough matchup? I know they're going to be out without Miranda Ellish, but still a top six team. Um, what makes them difficult to face? Um, I think a big part is that we're playing at Texas. You know, we're playing in their, in their home stadium. Um, and I mean, last I heard, we're not allowed to have fans, but there's also like, I think that they could potentially have their fans or whatever it is. Um, but just playing at someone else's stadium is always a struggle. But I think going in and just playing Arizona softball um, will we'll come out the way we want it to if we just stick to our game and not worry about anything else. Um, you know, there's always weather issues, but I think we just keep that in the back of our mind and go out and play the game we know how to play. Um, we'll definitely come out on top. Thanks, Alyssa. Thanks, Deja. Put you Andre in there now. Thanks.